And I believe in evangelism that helps to spread that and to share that is a major contribution to the world. So let me, let me, let me bring this to a conclusion. And, and um, I was, um, somebody had asked me, how do you define evangelism? And I said, well, Mary Palmer, who is, y'all know Mary from Diocese of Texas, y'all know Mary? Um, I really think Mary has given us a way forward, one of the critical ways forward. Um, in terms of evangelism, is sharing the faith. Uh, but it's a sharing that is as much listening to the faith stories and journeys of others as it is sharing our own. And it's that relational listening and sharing and journeying with another on their journey that's really the heart of evangelism. Because, see, evangelism is not about, um, I've got this theory, I really haven't fleshed it out enough, but, but let me just, it's just a teaser right now because I need to work it up a little bit. But I'm beginning to look at the parable of the sower, remember that one? A little bit differently, uh, where, you remember the parable of the sower, the one, y'all, do y'all remember the parable of the sower? Do I have to go, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, you know, it's the one where the, Jesus says, you know, the farmer goes out and he throws the seed and some of it lands on rocky soil, some of it lands on that superficial and, it, you know, the birds eat it and all that kind of stuff. But some of it lands on good soil, but clearly different contexts get a different response. That's basically it. What's fascinating to me about the parable, and it's Donna, and I don't quite know what to do with this one completely, is that the farmer's job is to, is to spread the seed, not to determine the outcome. Evangelism is about sharing the word, spreading the seed, but not to determine the outcome. What God and that person do is between God and that person. That's a different way of it. Because see, this is not about filling up our churches. It may do that, but that's, but that's not the reason for it. The reason for it is that seed of the word of God actually changes the world. It actually makes a difference. And if it helps somebody on their journey into a deeper relationship with God, however that journey takes them, praise God. It is not our job to determine the outcome, but to cast the seed. And Mary has gotten a handle on that. I remember Episcopalians, we were doing it for two years now, I guess, um, in North Carolina. And it was fascinating to me to have Episcopalians... Um, I mean, I'd been bishop there 15 years, and I'd gone to a lot of vestry meetings. And I, anyway, gone to a lot of vestry meetings. <laughs> I thought when I was elected bishop, I said, oh, I don't have to go to vestry meetings anymore. <laughs> Oops. Um, but, you know, I, I, I can tell you over the years, I mean, the, they, the meetings got a little bit better. We got a little bit more focused on the mission of the church and beyond the fixing the boiler and the roof and, and that, all of which has to be done, but, but we were able to get a little bit beyond that. I said, you really don't need the bishop here for that discussion, but anyway. Um, but I can tell you, after um, we had engaged sharing our faith, there were like a thousand people that first go around who did it, who came to the various meals and sat. Um, and it's set up, it's done the way, I, Episcopal, we're not God's frozen, we're God's introverted people. <laughs> that's who we are. That, that's really us. And we're kind of shy and polite. I mean, that, that's, that's, I mean, I, I'm born and bred Episcopalian, but I'm probably an anomaly in that respect. <laughs> but, but most of, but we as a church, we tend to be, we're not pushy people. We're, that's, not, that's not our way. And I don't think we need to pretend to be that. We, we need to be who we are. Um, but, but, but it occurred to me that, that that Mary has actually found a way for God's shy people to share their story in ways that are authentic to them and that are genuine and that matter. I mean, I love it. Do y'all know how it works, you know, with the little deck of cards? Let's see, Episcopalian cards. Fortunately, you don't have any whiskey with them, but, but, but cards and... <laughs> But little deck of cards and you pick out the question you want to answer. And they're not like, do you know Jesus as your personal Lord? And say, you know the difference between Jesus and Jesus. Uh, <laughs> too, it's, 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 it's not that kind of, have you been born again? Have you been saved? Have you been washed in the blood? You want to scare Episcopalians to death. Ask them that. <laughs> <laughs> but they're the kind of questions, can you think of a time where you actually went to a church and, and something inside ha happened? <laughs> That's real. <laughs> Can you think of a person who 
impacted your life and changed it and you kind of saw something of God in there? I mean, it's those kinds of that elicit what's really deep within, what's already in, in ways that are authentic. And the genius of it is the approach is you're in a small group. And the evangelism is as much listening to the stories of others in non-judgmental ways as it is sharing your own. That's evangelism. It is both listening and sharing and journeying with and letting God do the rest. So got interviewed by the New York Times. Thank you, Neville. I've really enjoyed that. Um, Anyway, <laughs> actually, it was okay. It was, uh, it's, uh, and I mean, it was very nice. Oh, that's why I'm being taped. It was a wonderful experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was really interesting when the article finally came out. I think it came out a month or two later uh, after the interview, I think. And, um, I, you know, I talked about evangelism and racial reconciliation as kind of where we were going. And we talked, we actually talked in some depth about that. I, what I didn't expect was how the reporter translated the word evangelism. When I looked at the article, and I, I think she was on to it. She didn't use the word evangelism. She may have at some point, but she didn't use the word evangelism. She used the word sharing the message of Jesus. I said, well, that's pretty good, actually. I, I, I could work with that. That's pretty good. At its deepest root, the sharing and listening is a sharing of the message of Jesus, both in what is said and what is lived. And that makes all the difference. And you are the communicators of the Episcopal Church. And at your deepest level, your calling is not just to report the news of the church but to report the good news of Jesus that gets lived in the church and in the world. And those stories touch lives and can change lives. Maybe our task is just to figure out how to tell the story, both to those who have already heard it but to that generation that was in that brewery in Durham for whom the good news is actually new news. Billy Sunday, great revivalist, and I'm gonna stop now. I don't know how I'm doing on time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Billy Sunday, great revivalist. Um, not sure I didn't agree with his theology, but, but, but anyway, he's a great revivalist. Um, uh, turn of the last century. Um, was reputed, to, he actually did say it. Um, I've actually verified the quote. Um, I've heard it for years, but he actually did say, this is like early 20th century. He said, heaven help the rest of Protestantism if the Episcopal Church ever wakes up. <laughs> Your job is to wake us up and tell the story. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you.